Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bedrock Guide. We are doing a little bit of resource gathering to start today's episode because we've got some fun things in store for you. We are going to learn how to build a suspension bridge in Minecraft. We're taking a little bit of a break from the redstone and farms aspect of our guide series because we've been going pretty consistently at farms and redstone for a while. And I figured let's break it up a little bit and we'll teach you how to do something a little bit different. So the first thing that you need to consider when you're going to do a building project is that you got to have things to build with and we don't have a lot of the things that we need to build with today. So we're going to grab some spruce wood, some dark oak, some warped wood, some chains, some campfires, all sorts of stuff and we'll throw together something really cool. And after a couple of hours of resource gathering, we are ready to roll. Right over here is a little cave that leads into the potion brewing room and our nether portal. And we're gonna have a bridge that comes across over here to this side where our mountain base is. Now there's no entrance over here just yet. I've had some people asking me, well, where's this bridge gonna lead to? Uh, it's gonna lead into the inside of the mountain at some point, but we have yet to get there. So I got a bunch of spruce here and I'm gonna make all of this in into slabs. And the first thing that we need to do is choose a location where this is gonna start. And I wouldn't worry about blending it in with the environment too much just yet, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it right here and it's gonna be three wide. So I'm gonna dig all of this out and we're gonna start placing blocks right here. Now I'm gonna do three wide right here just so I can mark out that this is going to be a three wide walkway. I thought about building it five across, but I think that's gonna be a little bit too big once we get the outer supports on, but this is where we'll start. And where we're gonna start is we're gonna go out three just like this, and then we're gonna go down one and bring it out one, two, three more. This is gonna get a lot trickier as we get out towards the middle, but we'll go ahead and do down one more right there. And then we'll do another one right here. And we're actually gonna go out five this time. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I think we're gonna go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five again. So what I think I wanna do from here, now that we've got a decent start on this side, is go to the other side and bring it out at the same dimensions that we did right here. It likely will not meet up yet because we haven't gone out far enough, but because this is the same elevation as this right here, you'd have a perfect arc and we wouldn't really have any kind of lopsidedness to it because the tension would be perfect on both sides. And so that's kind of the effect that we're going for. So let's head over here, crash into a tree a couple of times, and then we'll line it up right here. We'll come back a couple of blocks like we did on the opposite side and we'll go out one, two, and three. So far, what we have looks pretty good. It goes down three, three, five, five, seven, and then three, three, five, five, seven on both sides. I think I may knock this back to five and five so that the middle section here is the longest part of our dip. So one issue with doing this the way that we just did, if you don't get lucky like I did, uh, if you're trying to go for odd numbers, you might accidentally get an even number in the middle. Or if you're going for even numbers, vice versa, you might get odd numbers in the middle. Thankfully for us, we're doing all odd numbers and this middle section here actually happened to be 11 blocks wide. So we've got three, three, five, 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 11, and then three, three, five, 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 11. If for example, this happened to stop here instead of here, we would just extend this out, extend this out, extend this out, and then extend it all the way up until up here. And, and then we would break this last one so that it's the exact number that we want, but we don't have to worry about that because we got lucky or I'm just a genius, who knows? There's, there's no real way of knowing. It's, it's probably that I'm a genius. So then all we need to do is go over here and start matching up all of the blocks that we've placed down. And before you know it, you got something that looks a little bit like this. Now, this is fully functional. You can stop here. If you wanna be lazy and take the easy way out and make this thing look terrible, just go ahead and stop here. If you want it to be amazing, go ahead and keep watching the video and we're gonna get into the detailing next. Yeah, just as a side note here, I think I went a little bit overboard with crafting the slabs and hope we're gonna need those for something else. This bridge so far looks a little bit flimsy, so we're gonna put some supports in and we're gonna start on this side because we can actually see what's going on over here. Uh, and we'll have to do a little bit of tinkering over here to make it work with the side of this mountain and the little waterfall down there. 
player. We're going to start right here at the edge of the bridge, and we're going to do a little post that comes up just like this to make it look like this is kind of where it is anchored into the ground. And we also want to make sure that if there is any exposed stone that this is sitting on, uh, let's break that out as well. And we'll go ahead and put this and this there so that it does look like it is going into the ground deep, deep down. It's been dug out all of that stuff. Then what we want to make sure to do is come down below our walk path here. There is a reason why we're going below, which we will get to in just a bit. We're going to go ahead and put a sideways log right here. And then we're going to go ahead and use the magic of bedrock edition to go ahead and place blocks forward. And we want to make sure that this does stay underneath the walking path. So now this is actually going to be parallel with the walking path. So we're going to bring it down by one. So we'll go underneath here like we did with the footpath and we can bring this out forward again and keep going. And the next time it meets up with this section right here, we'll go ahead and bring it down again, but we're actually going to shift things up just a little bit at this phase. So we're gonna bring this all the way over to the edge here. And just to make it look like the bridge is sagging even more than it actually is, we're gonna bring this support down one more. Yeah, that'll definitely leave us enough space for the detailing that we wanna do in that area. So we'll go ahead and finish this, complete it all the way across. And there we have it. That's actually looking a little bit more sturdy already. The next thing that I want to do now that this little border is complete is actually go through and strip all of these logs. I feel like this will actually make the bridge look a little bit more worn and used which is exactly what we're going for. And we'll have a couple of tricks a little later on, but this will get us started. If you don't know how to strip logs, all you gotta do is go up to a log and hit the right click button on your mouse or the respective use button on whatever console or mobile device you're using. And that'll give you a nice little texture here to go along with your bridge. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go along the way here and we're gonna run fences across the top of this border. This is why we wanted it to be underneath. And every so often we'll go ahead and put another pillar to connect it up and we'll strip those logs as well. This part really does not have a whole lot of science to it. This is basically just whatever looks good to you. Go ahead and separate out your bridge. I think since this one drops down here, it makes sense to go ahead and put another pillar right there. And then I think we'll put another one right here. And don't worry about the big gap there. We're going to do something fun with detailing in that gap here in just a little bit as well. And honestly, that's a really good start. Let's go ahead and do this exact same thing on the other side so that we have it mirrored on both the left hand and right hand sides of the bridge. So we're getting to the point now where this is almost looking like a completed bridge, but it's not quite where we want it. I mean, even look at this. If we walk across it, this looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's very simple. If you wanted to stop here, you probably could, but we're not gonna. The next thing that we're gonna do is raise these barriers up just a little bit here and there because we're gonna run some sideways chains across just like this. We've used this effect before over here at the basalt farm. So I think it's a nice little tie in. It kind of brings the whole base area together. Regardless of where you are, we're going to have some similar build styles. So we're just going to go ahead and stair step these chains down as we go and we'll connect them all up and make this bridge nice and secure. And so far, that's actually looking really nice. Really happy with how those chains turned out. But I think I want to take a break from the top here for just a second. We do have some more detailing to do up here, but I want to start working on the support structure underneath this bridge. So while it does look like it could hold tension just like this, it does look a little bit heavy with these logs. So I think it'd be nice to have some extra support underneath as well. What we're gonna do for our support underneath is we're gonna start right here in the middle of the bridge. This is the exact center. And we're gonna place one temporary block right here and one permanent block right here. The reason this is temporary is because we want the whole thing to be facing that direction. None of them should be facing down. So we will fix that here in just a moment. And good, our scaffolding does reach all the way across. Perfect. Then we'll go ahead and do that and that until we reach the other side of the bridge. We need to go out one more. And there we go. So then what we can do is we can go underneath here and we're going to strip all of these logs exactly like we did with the dark oak there. It's very, very cool. I love how these combinations fit together. You, you wouldn't think that maybe this color would go with all these browns, but it does. And we made it work with all of these blacks and grays and stuff over here. And so it's a nice tie into our pirate ship as well. So not only are we going to have a support beam right down the center there, we're going to put one right here in line with that fence. 
and right here in line with that fence. So now that those three support beams are in place, we're gonna go ahead and do cross beams. And we're gonna start that by coming over here to the center. We wanna make sure that it is one block on the inside of the edge of this bridge frame right here. So we'll go one block right there. And we're just gonna carry it straight across into the wall right over there. And then we'll connect all of this up as well and run these beams all the way to that cliff face. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. This beam is going to intersect with that waterfall, so it might kind of shift things around a bit. And if we need to make any changes, we will go ahead and do that at that time. And here we are with another progress update. We've got the beams in place, and it looks a lot more supported than it did before. Um, it does look a little bit out of place, but it's not going to in a little bit. Just trust me. There are some detailing things that we're going to do up top that will bring the entire thing together. So don't worry, even if it does look a little bit out of place, it's not going to here in a few minutes. Now, just because I'm under this bridge right now does not give any of you the right to put in the comments that I'm a troll, even though I am sometimes. This is not that kind of bridge. I'm not a troll. You don't got to pay a toll. But we are actually under the bridge for a few more detailing elements. First, we want to go ahead and put these fences, every other one starting in the center, on both sides of this wall and on both sides of this wall. We're gonna go ahead and link these up every other one and they won't necessarily link up here, but it's hidden well enough behind these logs that you're never gonna see that it doesn't actually connect up to the ceiling on some of these slabs, but it's all about the illusion that this is being held up by this as well as being supported in the wall over there. So we're just gonna go ahead and put fences all the way across these beams, every other one, and then move on to the next bit of detailing. This is one of the best things about detailing like this is that you can do some cool things and you don't necessarily have to connect them as long as the illusion is there. It's gonna look really cool. So there we go, the bulk of our build is done. Just a few more detailing items to get in place. The first of which is dropping down here onto these warped log beams. Then we're gonna go ahead and put some fences in between them just like this to make them feel connected up. We'll just take a look back to see how that looks. And I really like it. Just adds a little bit more depth to that little support. And then we're gonna go across and here's where things get fun. We're gonna do a little bit of lighting detail on our bridge and we're not gonna do this right here. This would be the, the, the typical go-to, all right? Hey, we got lights on both sides. Maybe we'll skip this one and we'll put lights there. Uh, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make this a little bit more random uh, because it is a pirate bridge after all. They're not gonna be so tedious as to be symmetrical, uh, even though we've been pretty symmetrical so far. Don't worry, we're gonna break some of that up here in a little bit as well. I did say we're almost done with the build, right? We're, we're not done with the demolition yet. Uh, so let's actually take this one out and maybe we'll do one right here. So if we come over here at the very beginning of the bridge, and we see a lantern there and a lantern there that looks really nice. We definitely don't want to overdo this because we are going to have a secondary source of lighting. So we're just going to be careful with how much lighting we put in place. I think that looks really nice. Adds a little bit of sparkle as you're walking across the bridge. And I'm sure this thing is going to look really cool at night. So then the other thing we want to do is we want to go down here on top of these. And maybe this is where we will be a little bit symmetrical. We'll put one right here. We'll skip the middle and we'll put one right here. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side of the bridge so that we have one here, skip the middle and one here. Now let's take a step back and see how that looks. Ow, tree. Oh yeah, I love it. Even that little bit of variation with the lighting just makes this look so much more interesting. So when you're thinking about doing these kinds of builds, even though you may have to be symmetrical in some ways, just because that's the nature of a build like this, it's a bridge. You're not gonna wanna have like, not a post here, a post here, a post here, like, you don't want to randomize it like that, but there is a way that we can randomize this a little bit more to make it look a little bit more rickety, like it's been in use for a while and not so brand new, fresh and perfect. All right, so here's where we may want to be a little less asymmetrical again, is with this next source of lighting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and actually break this chain right here and we'll actually extend this fence up about a block, maybe two blocks above this one. We'll have to see in just a second. We're actually gonna break this one right here as well. And then we'll break that fence. And then we'll take our dark oak logs and kind of finish this up right here. It does kind of bring that nice little swoop back to this area. And then we're gonna hop up here. And on top of this fence, we've got some soul soil. 
We're gonna place soul soil right here, but I don't really like the way that looks. It just kind of looks like mud on a stick. So here's how we're tying in our warped wood from down below. We're gonna put trap doors around this, and this is going to serve as a lantern, not in the traditional sense, but a flame that will be lit on our bridge in multiple locations, and I don't think that's gonna work. Hold on, we're gonna have to pillar out just a little bit to make this work. So we'll pillar out right here and we'll throw another trapdoor down and close it up. And we'll grab a flint and steel and we'll go ahead and boom, we got blue fire. Absolutely love the blue fire. I think these soul flames are actually a less is more kind of situation. So let's put in a few and see how we feel about it. You've heard me say it several times throughout the video already that we could be at a good stopping point but we're not quite there yet. Like this all depends on you. You can build the little wood walkway that we did at the beginning and be done if you just want function. You could build the log supports and then be done if you want a little bit more of a realistic looking bridge. Then you can get into the detailing. Then you can get into the ultra detailing. That's kind of where we're at now. This is a good looking bridge and we could stop here and it would look very impressive and nice, but we're gonna take it just a little step farther. So here we go into the ultra detailing. I've got some spruce logs right here and I'm just gonna put one right here for comparison. All right, so this is dark oak. And if we strip this spruce log, you can see there's a slight variation between the dark oak and the spruce. I personally like the dark oak as the primary, but we're gonna put this in a few places along the path to make it look like maybe the sun has faded some of the wood. And we're also gonna do the same thing with our fences and even our slab walkway. So we'll just kind of come through here at random and we'll actually break that lantern that was there as well. We'll go ahead and place that down and we'll strip that, grab our lantern and put it back down. And then maybe we'll come over here and we'll hit these bottom two logs, throw some spruce in there and boom, boom. So we're just gonna go through a little bit at a time and start swapping out a bunch of these blocks. We're also gonna hit these right here. So maybe we'll go like boom, boom. and we'll hit that and that with some spruce. And again, it's a very, very subtle effect. It's not something you're necessarily going to point out when you're walking, but it just adds a little bit more interest to the build. All right, so here we go. There is a method to the madness. We do have a lot less of the spruce over on this side of the bridge. You can still see there's some variant, but over here, it's a different story. I made sure to make this a lot lighter as if this lava right here, the heat from it has dried out the wood and dried out any kind of water that is splashed up onto here, which is kind of why some of this is darker as well. Uh, makes it look like water has gotten this wet. Are they, we're gonna convert some of this stripped dark oak log that we recovered from the bridge when replacing it with the spruce. And we're gonna convert these into some slabs. And we're gonna be careful not to overdo it this time because we got way too many spruce slabs the last time. But we're gonna go through and do a similar thing here. So there's water right here, right? So what do you think is gonna happen with this little waterfall? Every once in a while, water's gonna kind of splash up on the bridge. So we're gonna go ahead and take some of this spruce out and we're gonna make it look as if some of this side is wet which is why this is a lot darker. And as it gets farther away from the waterfall, maybe it'll kind of get dry again. And so maybe only a few pieces here and there will have the dark oak, but there's still water right here. So a good portion of this is probably gonna get wet. Then as we get closer to the center of the bridge, because it is closer to the water, it would make sense that maybe, you know, some water splashed up underneath it or something. Maybe the wake of the ship caused it to crash off the mountain. So I think we will have a lot more of the dark oak in the center of the bridge than we will even over over here like we've already talked about how this is kind of dried out so it's going to be very few and far between that we have wet planks over here also known as the dark oak planks but i absolutely love this type of building because not only is it creative and makes the build look that much better it tells a story without telling a story. And that's kind of hard to do. There's a reason why the bridge looks the way that it does. And it's because there's water around or because there's lava around. We're being very intentional with how we place our blocks so that it tells that story just by being here. So you know the other thing we gotta do, right? We gotta go through here and change out these fences. I want the fences that are next to the dark oak to kind of match that as well as if there's water on these too. So we're gonna go through and start busting these out, fixing up the rest of the bridge, and we're still not done yet. Got a few more things left to do, but we're close. So you can really see now how this and this combined really sells that effect that that water got these planks wet. I just absolutely love this kind of effect. Then we're gonna take it a step farther. We're not just gonna leave this alone up here uh, because this lava is making this really hot and dried out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple of planks out here 
And we're gonna replace these, eh, maybe not in a diagonal shape like that. I don't think I like that. We'll go ahead and put that back. Maybe we'll put that there and we'll toss in some oak, which will lighten it up even more to sell that effect that this is getting dried out. And maybe as we progress toward the top here, most of this becomes the oak planks or slabs or whatever they're called. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love this look. So then what I think we're gonna have to do, actually, we're gonna have to get some oak fences as well and kind of match these up like we did with the dark oak fences. Yep, absolutely love that. Yeah, this thing is just looking so good at night absolutely loving it so just so we don't waste any resources let's go ahead and empty out our inventory a little bit because it is completely full we'll tuck away a few things that we don't need for the moment and now we're getting into some hyper detailing where we've got even more that we're gonna do to this walkway but it still doesn't look like too much it looks like a nice clean flow and we're gonna we're gonna make it look a little bit more rugged so we're gonna break out some planks and with some of them we'll go ahead and put down a campfire that's not where we want that actually so we'll go ahead and break that and we're gonna put a trap door right there just adds a little bit more texture variation now here's the thing about slabs this trap door works here but this trap door will not work here because it wants to be at the height uh, above the block and so we can't put it kind of even right there because this slab is in the way but what we can do is we can go over here and be like let's bust this one out and maybe we'll bust this one out and we're gonna toss a campfire right here and then we're gonna toss some water on it and then we'll take the water off and it looks like this plank has been worn to shreds and is about to fall through when you walk over it we're gonna do several of these across the entire bridge alternating between trap doors and campfires the other nice thing Thing about campfires is they are directional so we've got that one facing this way we're actually gonna go this way with it place some water pick it back up and now we've got a couple of different planks that are broken to shreds but they're facing different directions again just adds a little bit more interest to the walkway and I don't actually like this trap door here anymore because of that and I think that looks really nice just another bit of texture variation to break up the monotony of all of these spruce planks that we're seeing then we can take it a step farther even and I won't want to do this very often because I don't actually want to fall through my own bridge. Uh, but from time to time, maybe we can bust out a plank and just not put anything there. And maybe we can do that for some of these fences as well. And maybe we can even do that for some of the support beams underneath. Uh, who knows? We'll have to see what we can do to make this thing look a little bit more rickety, as if pirates have been using it for their secret passageway for years and years. All right, let's just take a stroll down our bridge and see what we've got. I'm really, really liking the feel of this. It looks amazing. We've even got some cracks here and I'm pretty happy with this amount of detail as far as I'm concerned This part is done. I have two more things that I want to do along the sides of the bridge and one of them is pretty simple We're just gonna go ahead and put some vines and we're only gonna put one at a time. No, there's a creeper. Oh my goodness Oh, <laughs> oh That would have been disastrous Okay, we're good Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and put some vines along the side of our bridge Then maybe we'll put some down here as well I can't reach that so we're gonna have to get our scaffolding back out and I'm only gonna put one at a time because this will grow out And it will also grow down so it'll spread across and it'll go down to the water We may eventually have to trim some of this back as it grows in and put some string under it So that it doesn't grow too far all the way down and I don't have a ton of vines either So I'm gonna want to be careful with how much I use and if we feel like we need more later Later on, we can always trim with shears some of the vines that we have on the bridge once they've grown out a little bit and expand it further. And the very last thing that we want to do today is put some banners along the side of our bridge to mark that this is pirate territory. Now, I actually had Killadrone design me a really cool banner that I may throw on the screen if I can remember. Uh, we're actually not going to end up using it because it's too close to the water to build something as grand and awesome as what he built for me. Uh, but Thanks again, Killadrone, for the awesome, awesome design. We may try to find a way to use something like that in the future, but unfortunately, it's not gonna work for this bridge. So we're gonna go a little bit more of a traditional route, and we're gonna use the loom to craft up a banner, and I think this will be pretty cool. I've tested out a few different things, but we're gonna go with a cyan banner. We're gonna toss it in there, and we're gonna grab an ink sack so that we've got some black dye, and we can choose any one of these patterns. I'm gonna choose a gradient to start with, and I actually want the gradient to go to the bottom so that the black is down here and the cyan is up here you might also notice that i've got this skull charge banner pattern in my inventory you can actually see the title of it right there 
We're not going to craft another one of these, but just so you can see how I did it, I've got a wither skeleton skull here and a piece of paper. And if you toss them in your crafting inventory, just like that, you can get a skull charge banner. So with our skull charge pattern, we can toss that right there in the loom, get our banner that's got the gradient on it. And I think this time we're going to go with white. That will make the skull and crossbones white. You know, we could do black if we wanted to, which actually looks pretty cool. Or you could do purple, or you could do green, or you could do light blue. But honestly, I think the best option for this is going to be white. And we'll go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to toss it back into the loom again. And we're just going to tinker around with a few more effects. And then I think we'll go ahead and do a gradient from the opposite side. So this is mostly black, but it's got that nice cyan tint right on the inside. And it also kind of blurs out the skull and crossbones just a little bit and honestly i think that's where we'll stop that's actually a pretty cool design for a pirate banner it kind of mixes in the cyan that fits our sails and our pirate ship and it fits the look of the warped wood down here that is absolutely perfect so then rather than having to create this banner again and again and again what we can do as long as we are starting with the same base color we can toss that into the crafting table toss that into the crafting table or just your normal crafting interface and you can duplicate the banner and now we've got two and now we have six banners we've got three on each side of the bridge and i think that fits in really nicely and that completes the entire look of our build for today i know we still have some things to do but we've got to go ahead and call it an episode we still need to prank prowl and retaliate for all of the upside down things that he put in our base upside down villagers upside down sheep upside down everything we got to get him back. That's going to happen soon. We also need to give Prowl the next guidebook challenge, so be sure to leave those comments in the comment section. Would appreciate any suggestions you might have. Just remember, keep it simple, something that can be done in one episode. But guys, that's going to do it for today. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a comment and leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more guide content just like this. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.